I came up with Sin City completely as an act of self-satisfaction. I decided I was going to sit down and do a book that would feature all the things that I like to draw. The fast cars and hot babes and the guys in trench coats. And, uh, and I, I put together stories that incorporated that. It was, it was a completely selfish act. Because I remember the idea of the Sin City movie being around back in the early 90s, but I never thought, I know, how could they ever adapt it? It would just become a regular movie. It wouldn't, wouldn't have the same feel. I started really looking at it as, instead of trying to turn it into a movie, which would be terrible, let's take cinema and try and make it into this book. Because the mediums really are very similar. These are just snapshots of, of movement. So I was so excited about it. Probably the most excited I've ever been about a project. I, I hunted Frank Miller down and knew I had to get his, his blessing and his involvement in order to make it right. I was a hard sell. I've got a good life drawing my comic books and there's really no need to, to um, let anybody have my baby. And I held to that fine until this Rodriguez guy started bugging my attorney and then my editor and hunting me down like a wild dog. And essentially, I were seduced. Robert showed up at our first meeting. You know, he whipped open his laptop and he'd already done some test shots of how he wanted to photograph actors and you know, how to stage things that really look damn good. I don't want to make Robert Rodriguez's Sin City. I want to make Frank Miller's Sin City because I love that material so much. I mean, he said, how about I fly you to Texas? We'll just do a test in one day. He called it a test. Um, and and uh, you know, we'll see how it works out. He said, the worst possible thing is we'll end up with a cool little short film and, you know, part ways. Um, and, you know, maybe you'll agree to do this. And I, I thought, what are you going to do in a day? I've been on movie sets. In a day, you, you know, you, you have somebody fill a coffee cup. I let her hear my footsteps. She only goes stiff for a moment. And in 10 hours, he shot an entire three-page short story of mine. This so-called test happened to include two very accomplished actors and be a completely polished piece of work that's going to be in the movie. Robert just basically came to me and said, I'm doing this graphic novel, putting it and making it into a movie. Uh, I don't have the rights to it. And uh, I need somebody to come down and help me convince him to like let us go ahead with it. When I saw it, it just looked so amazing. It was just so great. And it was like true Frank Miller drawings. It's like, you know, it was the real Sin City uh, cityscape. The only way to do a movie this faithful to something like Sin City would be to have someone like Frank Miller uh, co-directing with me. Frank is a natural storyteller. He's a, he's a visual storyteller. And I thought that he had a different approach to it. I didn't think someone from the comic world like Frank, who does what Frank does, need to come into Hollywood and suddenly start down here and move his way up. I thought he should be right at the same level as he's doing what I'm doing. He's graphically and, and with character and with uh, visuals creating stories telling stories. So I thought he should just be co-directing the movie. Okay. I wouldn't have gotten involved with anybody in Sin City without, without having a director's position. What was your last pose? Where were you last at? Sin City's too precious to me. And I could never entirely trust anybody else with it. I know the place. I live there. And, and I know everybody there. I even know where they went to school. Hey, Becky. Gail said no calls. I just want to hear my mom's voice. I won't tell her nothing. I mean, Frank has such incredible backstory about the characters, which is so great. Any question you have for him, he, he knows, you know, what, what, what she was doing before she walked into the scene, what her history is, all of that stuff. I mean, he, he wrote this stuff. And if you read Frank's writing without looking at the panels, it stands alone just as true film noir writing. And I think all the actors felt that it was our job to not only pay homage to the books and to film noir style, but also to Frank's writing. We, I don't think anybody changed any lines. Frank did. And he would suggest cutting a line or changing a line. And I, I always argued with him. I said, no, no, let's do it. Let's do the, you know, the exact text in the, in the books. Frank very much was the artistic director Keep the snake for, for the moment, but I want more booze back here. And Robert was the 
let's get it shot, let's get it done well, and let's get it cut together, director. And Robert is visually so amazing and so respectful also of, of Frank's sort of work. He's not trying to outright outdraw uh, Frank Miller. And uh, I think this is ace in the hole because he's staying true. Of all the principles involved in this, I've been the most startled by how faithful it is to the original. Frankie.